On this episode of No Sleeping in the Trophy Room, I check in with Jordan Sparks. Jordan is widely known as the youngest contestant to ever win American Idol. At 17 years old, her musical talent propelled her career into Grammy nominations, movie roles, and television screens across the world. Jordan Sparks exemplifies sticking to the script and honoring the gift. You see, it's one thing to get into the game, but it's a whole other thing to stay in it. And 14 years later, the multi-platinum singer-songwriter is ever-present and ready for more. Let's get into it. This is No Sleeping in the Trophy Room. What up, what up? My name is Lo Santonio. Welcome back to No Sleeping in the Trophy Room, the conversation fueled by motivation, experience, and truth. And I'm extremely excited to be joined by my guest today. I am here with Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, actress, TV host, mother. I am here with the incredible Jordan Sparks. Jordan, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Man, I'm so excited to have you here in the trophy room. Thank, Thank you. you so much for taking the time. Yeah, of course. I need this. Yeah, we need this. Yes, yes. <laughs> I need it. So, so, Jordan, we are here in Miami, Florida um, at Miami Athletics. I brought my good friend Justin here to come bring us through an amazing workout. Justin, talk to us about this gym and the workout that we can expect to go through today. Man, so here at Athletics, we are an athletically centric sports and wellness health and facility. Man, we focus on the four E's, the education, experience, the enjoyment, and the overall disengagement of the client. So man, we're gonna break a little sweat, have a little fun, you know, on the athletic side of things. But yeah, it's gonna be fun. In that order, man. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for that. So uh, Jordan, are you ready? ready to get to work? Ready? I was born ready, let's go. Uh, let's go, yeah, let's, let's go, go get let's go. Hey look, we're about to get to work. You guys keep it locked right here. This is No Sleeping in the Trophy Room. Uh, this is the best time, like, it's kind of become more with the environment. Yeah. You get kind of just like get in the atmosphere, get the, get the get the mojo rolling, get the vibes up a little bit. Kind of calls like the it's like the awakening period. Like I feel everything cracking, everything oh, yeah. stretching. Oh, yeah. Take some stretch deep breaths. Because yeah. I really like to. I'm one of those people like once I go, I go. Yeah. You know, I don't. It's either all or nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so she really encouraged me. Her name is Massey. And she's incredible and she really encouraged me to, to use a foam roller. Dana, my husband, does as well. He works out almost every single morning without fail. Yeah. And so the foam roller is his best friend there we go. <laughs> too. There we but go. you know, at the end of the end of the day, you know, we're winding down, watching a show with our, our little boy or something like that. The foam roller is a really easy thing to just pull out and That's right. use um, you know, while you're kind of in a resting state uh -huh. as well. So Jordan, I want to start where it all started for you. Yeah. Talk to me about coming up in Glendale, Arizona. What were some of the things that you, you know, that, that you learned growing up there? How did that influence impact your life? Man, um, growing up in Arizona was amazing. Not gonna lie, it was beautiful. There's so much beauty in a desert landscape. You just have to take the time to look. Uh, Arizona is a very spiritual place, so I always felt like I could breathe there. You know, when I um, traveled when I would be traveling around the world and it would be crazy I would come back home and I would look out the window and see it and I just felt like I could breathe which I, I really love it still feels like that for me I haven't lived there um, in about a decade but I still most of my family is there and I love to go back and visit um, but yeah I I grew up in a place where it was a lot more about the outdoorsy elements than it was about creative elements so um, there wasn't a lot in terms of doing stuff for music and things like that. I did do community theater, which I loved. Um, I had the best time and um, I would do that. And then at school, I would try and get into any type of musical program that I could choir or um, I think I did like another creative choir drama club. I was in all that type of stuff, but outside of school and maybe that one community theater, there really wasn't a lot there. So if ever there was a singing competition or if ever there was somewhere there was a stage, I would find it and that's where I would be, you know? Right back down into it, bang. Crawl back out, boom, upward face. Dog, point that chin in the sky, push the hips over the sky, push the heels down, crawl them toes up. Feel that good stretch in the hamstring, lower back, glutes, all that good stuff. Calves, opens up the whole chain, oh yeah. Got boom, you go down, you hit it, raise back up, lunge in, to the next ah. one. Yeah, one after another. 
It's the opposite side. Beautiful. Yep. Lateral lunge. Yeah. That lateral bend, that lunge in. Four rotations. Good. Hand goes down. Right hand goes down. Reach under that right armpit and open up chest wow, to the sky. Yeah, you'll find you'll find some stuff. You'll find some stuff that ain't working the right way today. <laughs> Good. Make sure you guys get a zoom in on the sweat. This is real work going on right here. Just a slow yeah. drop. Right yeah. There. It's just the warm up. Sure it's dramatic. It's just the warm up. <laughs> See, a proper warm up though. You got blood. Ain't, if the blood ain't flowing, you ain't sweating a little bit. You ain't warmed up yet. Right. Yeah. We're doing a real warm up right now. Good. Full rotation. Try to really rotate that chest to each wall. Punch and drive across. Good. Hand goes down, go through, pull the knee through, step and kick, right to the next one, boom, left, now the other knee up. Nice, easy flow. There it goes, there it goes. This is how I get out of bed in the morning, you know? That's how I walk to the fridge. There it is, there's the bigger draft. I was waiting for it. Let's go, Jordan. I was waiting for it. So, Jordan, I'm gonna talk about, you know, how did you harness your talent, your voice, at such a young age? You know, the world is our oyster um, at that age. There's mm -hmm. many things that we could get into, but what gave you the belief to, uh, to really pursue singing, to, to pursue your voice? To be honest, it's literally something I was born to do. Like, mm -hmm. I have to sing. It doesn't matter if I'm singing for a small group of people, if I'm on a stage with 10,000, 50,000, it could be something on TV, it could be just singing to my little boy. I have to, I have to. It's in my bones. And so when I was younger, um, you know, sometimes, when you're younger, everybody is kind of like, oh, that was so great, da, da, da. You never really know, you never really quite know if they're saying it because you're actually good at it or if they're just doing it because you're a kid, right? And so it was about, I think I was about seven when I realized that like, oh, they're not just saying this, like my voice is actually good. And um, I was still singing and, and doing all that stuff. I had the belief from them from the beginning. They, my dad, and my dad knew he was like, my girl's gonna be, she's gonna be a star, you know, yeah, she's gonna be somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and um, my mom was just like, yeah, let's do it. You know, why not? Um, they, they both really helped both my brother and I pursue whatever it is that we wanted to do. Um, and I think having that belief and then knowing just innately in myself too. I knew that my voice was special. It's a gift. Like I didn't do anything to, to get this. I haven't taken voice lessons. It's, I just was born. I'm just a conduit for, you know, the creator to speak through me. And I think I've definitely taken that with me. American Idol was like a boot camp. Anything after Idol is a cakewalk. I want to talk about that. Take me back to 07. Yeah. You know, to you trying out for Idol. Yeah. What was your motivation? What was the mentality of you walking into that room? You know, you got the judges at the table. Yeah. It's, you know, that. that Talk to me about it. What was, uh, what was on your mind? It's, um, so it's a, it's definitely a big process. So like when you see us walking into the audition room, there's like a whole bunch of stuff that happens months prior to us even getting to that point. Um, and so I think just pushing through and pushing forward, initially I wanted to audition because I was such a huge fan of the show. I was more excited to audition for American Idol than I was to get my driver's license. Right, right. Um, I turned 16 and I was like, I can audition for the show, you know? And um, I drove out to LA. I was still living in Arizona at the time. And I drove out to LA <clears throat> and got in line at 2 a.m. with everybody else. We were all singing all day, all morning. And we get down there. And a lot of people don't know this, but I was told no to my first mm. audition. And um, I remember walking back because we all had these wristbands on. And after you got told no, they would literally just cut the wristband off of you. Like there was no way you could sneak back in and do it again. Wow. And I remember walking out and just seeing, the age limit was 28, I think at the time. And I just remember walking out and seeing people like weeping, you know, just like weeping because maybe it was their last chance or they weren't expecting to hear what they heard. Um, but I just remember thinking, oh, I can come back next year, yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. I was the youngest you could be at the time. Uh -huh. And so I was like, well, I'm not gonna stop singing. So I went home, I did a localized version called Arizona Idol. And um, I won that competition and that sent me to Seattle the same season. Mm. And so I got to audition wow. again and then that's where I made it in front of the judges and made it through. So I'm, my thing is just all about perseverance and pushing through, you know, if somebody says no, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the end. That's just not the door you're supposed to walk through. But you know that if a door is closed, you got a garage window, you got a basement door, you got <laughs> an right. upstairs window, right. you got a sliding door, a Still pocket door. A Listen, <laughs> <laughs> you have so many, there are so many different ways. Like our journeys are not linear. They're, they're yeah. just crazy. 
Justin, I think it's about that time to get back to work. Um, we're about to get back to work. You guys keep it locked. This is no sleeping in the trophy room. Good. Come back. Yeah. Rip those hips. Yeah. Really rip those hips around. There you go. Good. Your golf swing. Raise up. Big extension. Boom. Throw it down. Slam up. Throw it down. All right. Up, throw it down. There you go. Raise up on the toes. Boom. Pull that chest out. Good. Face like five. This your time to get a little bit of anger out of your body. Something that's making a little Ooh. mad this week. Stop coming through. Good. 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 That's the one, that's the one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Put those hands around, those hips around. Dang. So Jordan, yeah. your debut album sold over two million copies. Yes. You know, I want to know, what are some of the pros, and, and I'm not going to say cons, but what are some of the pros yeah. and the learnings of having such success at a, at a, you know, so early in your career? Man, <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah. Um, only because Idol was such an unconventional way to come into the industry and there's no blueprint and there were five seasons before me and some of the winners did amazing some didn't quite reach a lot of heights some some people who weren't winners reached greater heights so for me looking at that I was like well there's no blueprint anything could happen and I just I'm so grateful for the support that I had and continue to have because I mean it's the industry has changed so many times since I since I got in, and it's changed in so many ways. The way that we are able to, uh, you know, interact with our fans, the way we can create our own content, the way we can, you know, really show things at our own pace and our own time, the way we want to, as opposed to the other way around, which was, I mean, they still have it that way, but the labels choosing when and they've got their schedule and the whole thing, which is fine. It definitely works. Um, but I mean, I. I'm really grateful that I came into the industry when I did because right now, you know, you could have something today and tomorrow nobody's even, you know, yeah. worried or thinking about you or, you know, they forget because everything is so quick now. And I'm just really grateful because I still have amazing fans. Yeah. I still have people who, you know, want to know what I'm doing and, you know, are interested in hearing my voice still and wanting to hear me sing and, you know, know what my thoughts are on certain things. And I'm just, I'm really grateful to be able to have that because not everybody has that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, now, yeah. you know, 15 years in the game. Yes. What, what are some like, what's some advice that you would have for somebody who was in that position that you were once in, mm -hmm. 15 years later? You know, what's some advice that you have? Um, I think my biggest, well, I have, I have a couple of pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first thing that I would say before I would go into advice is like, is this really what you want to do? You really have to want to do this to, to, to do it, you know? Because um, it's a lot of sacrifice, it's a lot of hard work. You know, people see the red carpets and they see the, you know, the free stuff and blah, blah, blah. And they think that like, that's what it is, but that's just a small piece of what you have to do. You know, you're sacrificing being at home for certain things, birthday parties, you know, you have to cancel, you know, different things on a friend, you're on tour sometimes waking up and not knowing where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of different things. It can get very lonely. It can get very lonely because it's very, um, it's a very uh, fast paced universe where only you are really feeling it. People are, you have people around you, but they don't know. And I think that's why athletes and entertainers like really yeah. have a love for each other because it's very similar you know you're on a team but you still have to mentally be strong yourself in order to make the whole team work you know right. so it's there's just there's a lot yeah, <laughs> that yeah. goes into it so first i would say okay make sure this is really what you want because if you don't then you're gonna be miserable mm -hmm. and be in a life that you don't want to be in my second thing after if they say it's yes is okay be on time please respect other people's time um be kind to everyone you never know what people are going through, what battles they're going through. Um, or if maybe they even have a similar situation to you, but the same people you see on the way up, the same people you're right. gonna see. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if you know you slip or there's a, you know, a little, uh, you know, evened out time or the valley, you know, who you see at the peak, you'll see in the valley, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I think those things are, are really important. And also, uh, I know it's gonna sound so cliche, being yourself is really key. Like you really have to know who you are so that the outside influences don't make you question who you are mm -hmm. and make you go into that spiral of, well, am I good enough? Should I be here? Should I be doing these things? No, know who you are. 
stand firm in that because the world needs that. The world needs who you are. Um, and then, man, I'm sorry. There's just a lot hey, of look, things because I'm like, come you on. You guys got to listen up. Jordan Sparks is dropping <laughs> unlimited gems right here. No listen up. It's free game, yeah, you know? Yeah, free game right here. <laughs> you heard it first, you said it best. All right. Unlimited free game right here from Jordan Sparks, right here on No Sleeping in the Trophy Room. We're about to get back to work. Keep it locked right here. Let's go. Woo. So, Jordan, I want to just go right into this next segment sure. of it that we have right here on No Sleeping in the Trophy Room. It's called Picture Me Rolling. Okay. So what I did is I went through your Instagram, I selected uh, some- yeah, that's a lot of pictures. Some, some photos, <laughs> yeah. You've been on there for a while. I'm trying to archive them, I'm yeah, so you, sorry. You were an uh, early adapter on the platform. I was. But you know, I have some photos here. I would love for you to break them down. Okay. I'm gonna start with this one okay. right here to the left. It's gonna pop up on the screen right here. Okay. Talk to me about this photo my right here. Dad. Okay, so that's me and my dad. I, I don't know how old I was there, but little. So I'm probably like nine months or something. Um, but that was him up at training camp. Wow. He was going to training camp for the Giants. Oh, wait, no. Not the Giants. The Cowboys? He been in college there. No, I, that, hold on, I gotta think. Yeah. 89. Yes, so this was ASU. Arizona State University. Yeah. Go Sun Devils. Okay. Um, and so my mom showed me this picture and uh, this was a picture that she took of him. Actually, I don't know if it was a sports photographer or if it was her, but she brought me up to training camp and that was just him cuddling me and we still make each other laugh and smile like that like my yeah. dad is my dad is amazing he's the sweetest man in the world he'll make you feel like you've known him forever like he's your best friend and yeah. watching him actually um really helped me for what i do now you know he played football we moved every year twice a year it was always the new kid you during the jersey season for a little bit too, i right? lived in new jersey yeah, yeah. Uh, ridgewood wyckoff roseland riverdale are you a giants fan on the low maybe the low, i am a giants, go giants fan let's go giants i have an allegiance bit. to the giants okay let's i go. do i do um <laughs> I, i'm a cardinals fan because i was born yeah, and raised yeah, in arizona yeah, yeah. so you know if they're, when they're not playing each other it's, yeah. it's, it's all good you know? yeah. Yeah. Super Bowl. I don't know. I don't know. Are you about the half or the half no, I need, I need, no, I need Arizona to, to win a Super Bowl. The Giants have there some, go, okay? Go. Arizona okay. needs a chance. Um, I'm going to go right ahead into this next photo okay. right here uh, of you oh and the family. This photo is going to pop up on the screen right yes. now. Talk to me about this photo right here. It's so a lovely this, photo. I know. It's so crazy. And it's so weird to even say this sentence, but this is where we basically introduced DJ to the world. So weird. Um, this was a People magazine shoot, and um, it was... Dana's first time like really seeing a big photo shoot type thing. It had been a long time since I had been in one. And then we were, we had DJ and I was a little bit nervous because there were a lot of people around and he was so small. Right. Um, but yeah, we did the thing and look at him. He's just looking at the yeah. camera smiling. He's I just can't it. take it. I can't take it. He's exactly like that now. He just big smile and he's got such personality. But this was like, this was a big deal. He was about, let me think. He was just a couple months old when we did this. Mm -hmm. So he literally was like, just had his little socks on and then yeah. was chilling. But yeah. it was a great day. And the pictures, I mean, I, I will cherish them forever. So Jordan, I'm gonna go right ahead into yeah. this next photo, yes. this last photo right here. Talk yes. to me about this photo right here. My medal. Yeah. <laughs> My medal. So I ran the LA Marathon in 2017. Oh yeah. Oh lord. It was not. It was yeah. not. It was not. Um, my the the church I was going to at the time, the pastor was like, "I'm gonna run. We're gonna go with the group." Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That was like in November. I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna run. We're gonna start training." We we trained once. We ran around the lake one time, yeah. <laughs> then just kind of forgot. And um, so Thursday before the. Uh, the marathon comes up and I go to church and I see them they're like, hey, are we gonna see you on Sunday? And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> you see me? And they're talking to me and they're just like, you can do this. Like, you can, every single person is like, you can do this. And then I realized I was the only person telling myself that I couldn't. And I was like, no, no, that's not gonna happen. No way is that gonna happen. So I was like, I will see you there at 4.30. No training, no nothing. I wow. woke up on Sunday morning, got wow. my number, and I and you made went, it happen. And I did it. Uh huh. Yeah, you I made did it. it happen. You made it happen. <laughs> oh. Just thinking back on it. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I made it happen. Listen, yeah. you know, you know what the legacy runners are, right? Yes. The legacy runners are 60, 70, 80 year olds, yeah. and I was like, that's where yeah, I'll be. That's, that's right. Be. I was just like this, <laughs> right. but I, but I did it. I, I crossed the. We went from Dodger Stadium to Santa Monica, and 
I stopped maybe twice, once to tie my shoe, and once at mile 21 to like stretch my hamstring. But other than that, I, li Yo, I kept are, moving. Yeah, that's Seven crazy. hours and 45 minutes, I crossed the finish line. They were tearing it down. I said, don't. <laughs> yeah. I was screaming, I was Wait like, don't you, you dare yeah. tear that down before I get across Straight it, because it was an eight hour limit, right? Mm -hmm. And so I cross, I get my medal, and I just start slowing down and that my legs locked up. Somebody had to carry me to the car. It was gotcha. crazy. There's a whole story that goes on uh, through, but I'm so proud of myself for doing you that. You should be, you should be. That's and it. now I know that I can do it. That's right. So exactly. maybe one day I might do it again. Right now I'm like, I don't ever have to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Hang the medals yeah. up. It's beautiful. We can represent. It's the mental like, Exactly. I did that and do it again. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I made a playlist and everything. It was like a trap gospel playlist Here we go. <laughs> called Just Keep Running. Yeah. And I just had it on repeat and I kept going. I was like, this is cool. People out on the side right. supporting you. They have yeah. no idea who you are. Like, it was a really cool moment. And I think it's just a testament to what you said earlier, just about you know you being able to do whatever it is you put your mind to. Yeah. And you yeah. did that, and you did that. Thank you. I did yeah. that. I paid for it, but yeah. I did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, listen, I would not recommend doing a marathon without training first, guys. Though, yeah. so I did do it Pro like tip. that. Pro tip. Pro tip. <laughs> Please train, train yourself, so Absolutely. you don't you don't hurt yourself. Man, so look, we're gonna finish up right here. No sleeping in the trophy room. Uh, you guys keep it locked. We got George Sparks with us. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's go. There we got left right here. Come on, push it hard. Push it hard. Push it hard, baby. Good. That big squat. There you go. Yeah, good. Good. Dude, use your legs. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. Almost there. Ten. Come on. Four. Come on. Push it hard. Three, two, one. Bang. 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 That's work right there. That's work. That's work. That's work. Tell me how I'm supposed to keep it though. Hey, there it is. That was perfect. Perfectly timed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I want to thank you so much. We're not going to wrap right now, but we're going to step outside and go get some air. And I'm going to ask you one last question. I'm going to ask one last question outside, but okay. thank you so much. This is amazing. How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel great. What? I feel awesome. I feel alive now. This is a perfect way to do an interview because endorphins. Man, you know? that's endorphins right. make people happy. Your clarity, you're good, you feel good. Thank you. High guys. energy, okay. high frequency, high transparency. Right here, no sleeping in the choking room with Jordan Sparks. We're gonna get right back with you in one second. Stay right there. So, so Jordan, before you get out of here, uh, how we like to close out these interviews is with your champion's mantra. Is Ooh. there a ritual, a saying, uh, something that you do to remind yourself every day that there's no sleeping in the trophy room? <laughs> That there's no sleep. To be honest, my thing that I have had to tell myself my entire career, I actually have it tatted on me. It is the prayer that I pray before um, I perform, and it's really just breathe. Just breathe. <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm a I'm yeah. high off life. You know, I I'm a very highly energetic person, and so I when somebody's like, okay, Jordan, five minutes, it feels like five hours and I'm standing there and I get it's not so much nervous I just get anxious to get on stage I'm just ready to go so I always have to tell myself to breathe and to calm myself down and I think for a lot of people if we just took a breath a lot of different things could be solved or taken care of in a different way if we just took that breath first so definitely breathe in all situations and all circumstances make sure you breathe and give your body a second to just be. That's amazing. Yeah. Can I borrow that? Please. Just breathe. Just, just breathe. Just breathe. Just, <laughs> breathe. So just do it. Man, so Jordan. Simple, but it helps. Thank you so much for taking the time to step into the trophy room. Share your journey. Share your truth. Thank you. Share your motivation with us. We wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. And uh, we can't wait to see what's next. You Thank know? you so much. Hey, and anybody else who wants to do this, do it because it's fun. All you celebrities watching this, I know you're watching. <laughs> yeah. Come and do it. Come Get on, that workout on. Room, Tell man. your story. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Work, hey. for real, yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. We appreciate you. Thank and, you. Uh, big shout hey. out to my guy Justin. Ah, yes. <laughs> the good folks here at Miami Athletics. This is No Sleeping in the Trophy Room. We will catch you next time. Peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>